Hello, my dear humans. A very good morning from San Miguel de Allende. It's an early morning um, and I am leaving soon and I have a change of plans. So I'm done with my assignment here, which was filming for a free daycare for low income families. And my next location is in Puebla. What I was going to do, I was going to ride via San Luis Potosi and then explore all the waterfalls there, all the uh, mountains. There are a whole lot of amazing cool features that I wanted to check out, but if you, I'm not sure if you noticed, but I talk like my nose is blocked. Why? Because my nose is blocked. <laughs> I have a sore throat, running nose, but I have to go. I have to be on the road today, so probably ibuprofen and just going. I have a place to recover in Pachuca, so today I will be just um, riding from here to Pachuca and skipping all the San Luis Potosi beautiful stuff, which makes me a little bit sad, but I just want to play it safe because I promised to be in Pueblo location for specific dates and I I just cannot mess it up, you know, if I promised I do this. Yeah, let's get on the road. spot to park it Oof. Oop. Oop, 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 oop. Oop. Oof. all the trainings and all the gym work is paying for itself even me being sick uh, yeah that was cool it's actually only 300 kilometers, so I might be able to do it without stopping for gas. But it's four hours, so I might want to stop still. Let's see. Oh, 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 oh. So yeah, I volunteered for a week in Centro Infantil de Los Angeles. Um, it's a free daycare for low-income families and I will be making a movie uh, out of their story. It's, it was a different microphone setup, different camera setup, everything was um, kind of new to me. And this is my first big project, so I would appreciate any support. Uh, when I am releasing this vlog video, I am not sure if movie is out yet or not. But if it is, I will make sure that I communicate it, that it is out and communicated the link. Uh, yeah, it was an amazing experience. And um, I spent a lot of time with these kids. And what amazed me is how good care they are taken of there like if their hair is always done perfectly and uh, they are being loved and and all so you will never s and the facility the facility with the rooftop where i stayed um, it was the coziest place in mexico i've seen yet so yeah, when you're there and you are working with these kids, you will never tell that they are from low-income families or something. Oops, I missed my turn. No, no, come on. 
on. Okay, there is a circle anyway. We'll make it working. And the staff there, uh, people who volunteer to work with the children. That's that's really cool. I I mean, um, I met really good people there. That's. That gives me some hope for humanity. Um, yeah, probably if you subscribe to my Instagram, you already know all of this. So sorry for repeating. But this is for those who are not subscribe subscribed. Um, now this is for my movie, but I thought that I might want to record this as well um, yeah so children in this school they have outstanding results in uh, the scores when they go through some standardized testing um, and what I do right now this is for my movie I'm checking out one of the neighborhoods where kids come from um, yeah I just want to get the whole story did not film San Miguel de Allende uh, well, I filmed it for the movie, so you'll see it in the movie, but for the vlog I did not and for my taste there was actually nothing to film, sorry guys For so, sorry to those who love San Miguel de Allende, but I was really shocked uh, seeing how um yeah so the poorest and the richest they live side by side there and you just see people on the streets all over and uh, then multi-million dollar houses um yeah everything is side by side and i got to know the both sides okay so i guess this is the neighborhood i got to know the both sides like i was uh, talking to people on the streets oh hello doggies hello doggies hey doggies no 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 please don't please don't I was talking to people on the streets um, and right after that I went to dinner for some restaurant let me remove the stop okay we can just go now uh, to some restaurant where uh, tourists and Expats, hello, hello, no, 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 oh, please don't, please don't bite me. Um, yeah, so this is the neighborhood. Um, yeah, where the rich expats and tourists get to have dinner and all. Uh, honestly, I did not enjoy this dinner at all after what I've seen. Yeah. Uhti. I'm not sure if this is the road, but that's fine. After all, I have an adventure bike. Not sure where I am even, but that's okay. Ooh, this does not seem like a road. Yeah, so they did not really love an idea of me coming here because they said it's easy to lost, to get lost, and I totally understand this now. Okay, let's turn around, maybe. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Okay. Hello.
Yeah, so the difference between the richest and the poorest here hit me really hard and uh, keep in mind that I come from Silicon Valley context where there are a lot of homeless people on living on the streets and all of this and side by side with engineers who make a ton of money uh, but even there the difference is not that big as here so it's it's crazy yeah and people um, told me how how they are gonna buy houses here the uh, tourists from yes they were just um, having good times and and there's nothing bad there is nothing wrong with that but I guess that people should pay more attention to locals when they move somewhere because the problem of San Miguel de Allende is there are a lot of expats so city is actually actually belongs to expats and when tourists come here they prefer to go to expats expats businesses because expats speak good English and they know what Europeans and Americans want um, and because of that um, locals they cannot afford living where they used to live their whole life anymore uh, they have to move out they start to live in poverty and actually even though San Miguel de Allende is a cultural and touristic center uh, half of the population here is living in poverty and about 8% of it uh, lives in extreme poverty yeah that's what you did not know about San Miguel de Allende probably but that's let's let's leave the whole story for the movie and just enjoy the riding for today uh, yeah we are in the state of Guanajuato we'll go to the state of Hidalgo today and I'll see how I feel after this and San Luis Potosi there is a road, a very beautiful road from San Luis Potosi to Tampico. Um, I guess I'm leaving this for the next time. Okay, something happened, I guess. There is a huge line of traffic there. Not sure if I should pass on the right or how how people do it here. Oof. How is the situation on the right? Uh, there is... No, doesn't work. Mm -hmm. This is too narrow for me. No, I don't want to. And a lot of trucks around. Well, at least we are moving. Should I try to go there? Let me try to pass this guy to 
can do it like this. Okay. Clear water lights. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, clear water lights. Here it is narrow. Can't remember how how many times uh, clear water lights helped me in traffic and at night. Whew, feels like I'm in California again. Uh, I'm not sure how they... well, <laughs> I was about to ask if lane splitting is allowed in Mexico and then remembered how they think that there are three lanes even for cars. like riding in between trucks I can tell you honestly not fun nah this is too narrow okay if this right guy will move a little bit to the right then I will go but not right now Okay, I think it's time. Oof. And now I do a stupid thing that... I don't know. I don't know how they are used to do it here. And now we get to see what actually happened. Oh! Okay, what happened is a toll road. Oof. Okay. Okay, now I feel like I was cheating, but yeah. Staying in a car in this traffic is a bit more comfortable. A little bit. Than on the motorcycle. So, no regrets. If you follow my journey you probably know that they charge different amount of pesos uh, for motorcycles and for autos uh, and they should ride the amount of pesos on the board right there yeah for me it's usually takes a bit more time to pass this because I need to take out my wallet, stop the motorcycle, uh, take out my wallet, find the pesos, you know. Oh. Hola, hola, hola. Let's do, I don't know, 500, what else do I have? I have 100. Oh, I think it's... Gracias! Mm -hmm. It was under 50 pesos. Interesting that the board here does not work. I usually check with the board first. Okay, let's go. Mexico! Mexico! Woo! Woo 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 woo! We are somewhere. Oh, dogs on the road. Oof. No, doggy, be careful. some 
major accident on the toll road so I am taking some back roads um, but yeah the toll road is blocked completely like I was riding for an hour and that uh, Google said that the time of my arrival is just growing and growing and the time that I still have to ride is um, still the same or it's even increasing so I'm not going there taking some back roads and look at this I think I am going some right direction mountains all around um, yeah this is pretty cool I have two hours left And we are in Pachuca. This will be my spot for recovery. Um, yes, and in my next episode, I will tell you my Puebla plan. Puebla is my next location of my filming project. Yeah, I will be in the place where I sleep soon. So, thank you so much for watching this. I will see you guys next Sunday. Oof. Crazy. This is crazy.